Everyone always says, the best camera is the camera you have on you. People also say, the best camera is the camera that you know. Of course, having more expensive gear will get you the fancy 4K, 8K, 120fps footage, more pixels for higher res photos, and whatever else higher quality specs there are. But, it won't give you a more creative eye, or give you one key element to creating impactful art. A good story. What's up y'all? Welcome, or welcome back to the channel. Um, <laughs> talking to the camera just does not get any easier. <laughs> Over the last five or six years or so on my photography journey, I've been using the Canon T7i. I've used it for everything so far, from street photography, to shooting landscapes, portraits, shooting events. I'm using it to film this video right now, and I've been absolutely blown away by how much I've been able to get out of this camera, especially with it being such an affordable option for a DSLR. There's been a handful of comments on my video so far of you guys asking questions about the camera, my experience with it, uh, different settings, things like that. So I figured it was finally time to make this video. This won't be a typical review video where I go over all the specs of the camera, but I do just want to share my experience with it. Um, just kind of talk about the lenses I've been using, share some photos that I've taken with the camera, share what I've learned so far, share some do's and don'ts, and just kind of yeah, talk about my experience with it. The whole point that I want to get across with this video is that if you are just starting out with photography, you don't need super expensive, high quality gear to get you going. Um, it's more about training your eye. And um, yeah, I just don't want you to think you need to spend $3,000 on a camera to just get started. Yeah, so with that, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about with this camera is how easy it is to use and how easy it's been for me to understand. Using this camera for as long as I have, um, something that I've liked about it is how comfortable it's felt in my hands and uh, just how easy it's been to use. Everything is laid out really nicely, it's very self-explanatory, and it just has a nice weight to it. The body overall is a plastic, but it's like a hard plastic, it's never felt flimsy, it actually feels really durable. And something else I like about it as well is that the hand grip on the side has like a kind of like a rubber texture over it, which makes it really easy to hold on to. Um, just gives you extra grip while you're out shooting. I've also found the wheel that's behind the shutter button to be really satisfying. You can turn it left or right to increase or decrease different settings like your shutter speed, your aperture, your ISO. It's also made it really nice to change things quickly if you need to. All the menus are laid out really nicely and easy to understand. Everything is right in front of you. And speaking of the screen, it's also a fold-out screen, which is super helpful. When you want to get tough angles, if you want to get low to the ground, it's nice for shooting video. If you're vlogging with the camera, you can flip it around. Everything is self-explanatory, as I said, uh, which is something that I like as well. I just want to preface this section by saying that I understand that higher quality lenses and camera bodies will get you different results. And there's a time and a place for everything. But when you're like me, and when you were just starting out, like when I got this camera, I didn't know anything about camera settings or specs for cameras or anything like that. I just wanted to shoot and practice and learn on. And if you're in the same position as me, then this video is for you. Or if you're in the same position that I was, then this video is for you. This has been the perfect beginner camera for me, and as I touched on in the intro, um, I think it's great to get a camera body that's affordable in the beginning so you can learn and practice and train your eye, and then add on different lenses as you go. I had to learn in order to understand what I wanted and what I didn't want. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get into the lenses. So the first lens I want to talk about is the 18 to 135 millimeter zoom lens. I have used this lens so much and I love it for a lot of reasons. And the main reason being that it is so versatile. People are confused as to why I still use this lens to this day because it's not a good lens compared to what's out there. Um, and I can understand that because it basically is just a kit lens. 
but for me it's more so the why. Basically allows me to shoot anything I want from street to landscape since it's really wide at 18 millimeters and zooms all the way into 135 millimeters. I can use it from sun up to sun down without any issues. Um, I will say it does get a little bit tough to shoot with this lens at night since it only goes down to 3.5 for the aperture and then uh, when you zoom in it goes to 5.6. Obviously if you're using a tripod then that won't be an issue but if you're shooting street you can, there's different ways around it like finding light in a scene and things like that so you can still make it work. Um, I did for a while but I have other lenses to recommend in this video that are still affordable that will allow you to shoot at night much easier. Um, so I'll get into those as well. This is probably more of a personal reason, but something I love about this lens is that it's the lens that basically got me comfortable with street photography and just comfortable with going out with a camera in general. As more of an introverted person, when I first started going out to shoot, especially with street photography, it was a little daunting because I felt like everybody was staring at me, <laughs> even though they weren't. But there's something to be said there with the aspect of just physically going out and being comfortable with shooting. And this lens helps me with that because of the zoom. It allowed me to practice composition and shoot subjects on the street without physically being close to them. It allowed me to zoom in and get the scene that I wanted. Now there is something to be said with getting comfortable with the zoom and relying on the zoom. But in the beginning when you're just learning, I think what's more important is just getting comfortable and learning how to use the camera first. That's what happened in my experience anyway. It won't give you the bokeh and the depth of field that you see in photos. It does give you some, but not the kind that you'll see with lower aperture lenses. But again, I have more of those that I can recommend in this video as well. So I absolutely love this lens. I still use it all the time to this day. Um, it's the perfect lens to learn on in my opinion and I would highly recommend it uh, to you as well if you're looking for a lens to start with. The next lens I want to talk about is the 50mm f1.8, also known as the Nifty 50. This was the second lens that I added onto my collection, and it's great because it's actually an affordable lens, being only $125 compared to other lenses that's super cheap. What I liked about this lens is that it allowed me to start experimenting more at night um, and with portraits and different things because it was a lower aperture lens than the 18-135. to Since it does go down to f1.8, so that just opened up a bunch of doors for me. And since you can open up the aperture more, you can increase the shutter speed, which I like for street. Something I will say also about the T7i is that it does have a crop sensor. Again, I didn't know what a crop sensor was in the beginning, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, the 50mm with the crop does come out to be around like a 74mm or something like that. All that means is that you just, you'll notice that you'll have to stand a little bit further back from the subject when you're shooting portraits, but it's not the end of the world. Um, it just threw me off guard in the beginning coming from the 18mm lens. I noticed I had to stand a lot further back. So I definitely recommend this lens if you want to shoot portraits and you don't want to spend an arm and a leg. Um, and also, it's good for video too. It's gonna be a lot of information in this video um, and I keep checking my like scripts with like bullet points. Um, I hope I don't miss anything, but um, <laughs> I'm gonna just try my best. So the next lens that I want to talk about is the third one that I got and that was the 85mm f1.8 and this has become easily one of my favorite lenses now. But when I first got it, um, it definitely wasn't that way. I actually kind of hated it when I used it for the first time um, because coming from my 18 to 135mm zoom lens, I hated how I couldn't zoom and it was super cropped because of the crop sensor. I almost gave up on it. But after using it for a while, I started seeing the power of this lens, and now it's one of my favorites. One of the first things I noticed about this lens is how incredibly sharp it is. Also being able to shoot with a low aperture allowed me to have a faster shutter speed, which I'd like for street since your subjects are usually on the move. 
So it's great for portraits, it's great for street, it's super sharp, um, it's great for B-roll as well. This became my go-to lens for shooting at night because it is an f1.8 um, and also shooting during the day. I liked it because I could turn up the shutter speed a lot higher since more light is coming in. When using this lens for street photography, it allows you to kind of single out subjects or even focus on specific details of somebody like a hand or like an article of clothing because of the depth of field and uh, it makes it a lot of fun to play with. And for me being a more shy and introverted person when shooting in the beginning, still kind of to this day, <laughs> I liked it because it still gives you the distance physically between the person and where you're standing. I'm gonna link all these lenses down below as well. Um, the one that I got that I have, actually where is it? It's in my bag, but I got it from a flea market actually. Um, somebody was selling one and I got a super good deal on it. But I'm gonna link the one that I have down below so you guys can look at it and just compare different prices and things like that. So, the next lens that I added onto this camera within the last year or two is the one that I'm using right now to record this. It is the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter f1.8 art lens. <laughs> it's so long. I was gonna call it the Sigma. So the reason I got this lens is as time went on, um, I wanted something that was still wide that allowed me to get closer to subjects and still give me the depth of fields that I was looking for. And that's exactly what this lens did. I wanted it mainly for shooting portraits, uh, shooting video, like B-roll elements, and also for shooting events. I just wanted something that I could rely on and that gave me the depth of fields that I didn't have with my 18 and 135. And this lens is incredible. It's super sharp, um, it gives really nice bokeh depth of field in the background. And yeah, I will link this one below as well. So with all of this, before we move on to the next section, I just want to say that just because your camera doesn't have the highest quality tech built in doesn't mean you still can't create great work. I still say getting an affordable camera in the beginning, learning about photography, finding your eye, learning how you want to shoot, you know, just learning the basics of photography, and then adding on the lenses to that camera just to kind of open up more doors to explore with. I think that's a that's a great way to go. I just don't want you to think you need to spend $3,000 on a camera body in the very beginning just to start with because you definitely don't have to do that. The point is that more expensive gear won't give you a more creative eye. That comes from within us and the story that we want to tell. Not the camera or the lens that we're using. Alright. <laughs> it's a lot of information. Moving on. So the next section, I just want to talk about the actual camera itself um, and just different settings that I use while I shoot and uh, things I've noticed and uh, stuff like that. <clears throat> so the Canon T7i has a lot of features built in. I'm honestly not even using the majority of them, but there are a few things that I stick with that I use all the time. The camera does have auto mode, manual mode, shutter priority, aperture priority, and various other creative filters and just different scene settings as well. I also shoot in RAW all the time. The image quality is something I'll talk about later on in the video, but the file sizes are big. They come on to like 30 megabytes when you're in RAW, which just gives you more control over the color and the edit later on. And the other thing I've been impressed with with this camera is the autofocus. As you can see, even when I'm filming this, let me see. For a $700 camera right now, this thing is actually really good. Let me see. It adjusts quickly, it's great. And when you're shooting street, I have it set to AF servo, which basically means that it tracks any moving subjects in the frame. These blue boxes will come up on screen, which tells you what it's tracking, and that lets you know what it's focusing on, which is super helpful, and it's been very reliable in my experience. Something I did notice with the auto mode is that it does tend to stray on the more overexposed side, um, which is fine. Everyone has their own way of shooting. But for me, as I started shooting more, I knew that I liked a darkier, darkier? <laughs> I liked a darker and moodier tone to my photos. So that's when I started doing more research and learning about manual mode. 
I will link some videos down below that I watched when I was learning different camera settings in the beginning um, that were super helpful to me. But what I liked about the manual mode, it gave me full control over the look that I wanted. It allowed me to intentionally shoot underexposed. You definitely don't have to shoot in manual mode either. I just use it in certain instances when I want control over the photo. Speaking of manual mode, um, as I got more into street photography, I started noticing that I was missing shots as they were passing me because people are moving, things are happening quickly, and you can't always adjust the settings super quickly uh, to get the photo. So that's when I started using shutter priority mode and that changed everything. No matter what the lighting is like, what the scene is like, um, you can set your shutter to a certain speed and the camera will automatically adjust for you so you can get the photo. And with the T7i, I've noticed it is very reliable, it works super well, and I use it all the time now. There are different instances when I want a certain look, like when I want to isolate a subject, um, like in shadows, or if I want to just play with the light and shadow in general, I will use manual mode. And a tip with that is actually using the screen for this. If you're in the live mode, with this camera. Something I like is that you, when you adjust the settings, it'll show you what the final photo will look like. And that's something I use all the time, uh, specifically when doing light and shadow photos, um, when I wanna capture scenes like that, when I'm shooting street, um, but that's just a pro tip as well. So overall, there is a lot built into this camera that I'm not using, but those are the things that I've just gotten me by over the last five years or so. next thing I'll talk about with this camera is the image quality and the color. Every camera has something special about them and unique to them. Something I love about Canon is the color and I've actually been super impressed with the quality of photo that I've been able to get out of this camera, uh, especially with it being such an affordable option for a DSLR. As I said, the raw files are around 30 megabytes, which is plenty big, plenty big, <laughs> which is a good size. I've printed my photos on canvas before, um, one of them being 40 by 43, which is a decent size, and the quality was great. I don't know much about like file size compared to how big something should be, like shooting billboards for example, but I'm not shooting billboards and <laughs> I definitely wasn't when I first started. So compared to what else is out there right now, the video quality isn't anything that's super special, but it still goes up to 1080p 60. Uh, 1080p 30 and you have 1080p 24 FPS. If you're shooting photos for the most part then this doesn't matter much anyway and 1080 still looks great like I'm using it right now but yeah if you're using it for photos anyway then the photo quality has been amazing so far I love it and uh, the video won't matter much but 1080p is still fine. The battery life is something else that I've been pretty impressed with with this camera. Um, I've gone out for countless street sessions for hours at a time and I've only had one battery. I did end up getting two more within the last few years because I kept forgetting to charge the one that I had, which <laughs> that's my own fault, but having the two is nice. I'll link the ones that I have down below. They were from Amazon, they were pretty cheap. I did a Google search while planning this video and Canon says you can take up to 600 photos per charge with this battery. I never had an issue with it, um, but I've been pretty impressed with it so far. Actually, the POV video that I filmed in the snow, I feel like half the shoot, the battery was like blinking red. Um, I don't know how it lasted that long, but <laughs> it's I was pretty impressed by that too. Okay, so overall, the Canon T7i has been the perfect beginner camera for me. I've been using it for five or six years now to do everything that I have so far, and I've loved it. Even when I do upgrade in the future, I want to hold on to this thing for sentimental value because it's the camera that started everything for me. Yeah, it's done everything I've needed it to do, so if you're looking for a beginner camera, I highly recommend this one for sure. As I said in the beginning, I've been, and throughout this video many times, I've been blown away by how much I've been able to get out of this thing with it being such an affordable option for a camera. And the thing that I do want to just keep saying is that you don't need something super expensive to start the journey with. Of course having higher quality gear uh, will get you different results, but you need to learn first and you have to start somewhere. And that's what this camera did for me. I say use what you have, 
get comfortable with it, learn the basics of photography, just practice and then add on lenses as you go and then in the future upgrade. But you know, in the beginning, this has been plenty for me. I don't want you to spend a ton of money in the very beginning thinking that more expensive gear will get you better photos um, because it comes with time and training our eye and we definitely have to start somewhere because it's your eye and it's training your eye that counts. Okay, that was a lot of information. Um, I hope I didn't miss anything, but if there is anything that you're curious about with this camera that I didn't mention, definitely let me know down below. Um, I'll answer any questions that you guys might have. If there's anything I didn't touch on or if you want me to explain anything further, definitely let me know. And yeah, I can't recommend this camera enough. I just want to say thank you and shout out to my friend Leon for helping me film this video. I'm going to put his Instagram and YouTube links down below, so definitely check him out. Alright, if you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. Give the video a like for the algorithm. Hit subscribe if you want to, I'd greatly appreciate it. And um, yeah, I have more videos coming out on the channel, so stay tuned for those. More POV and uh, different things like that. And um, yeah, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching, get out and shoot, and I will see you next time. See ya.